All right, hey guys, and welcome to another Blender tutorial. So today we're going to be talking about dynamic paint. And dynamic paint's been in the Blender trunk for a little bit. Uh, and it allows us to do some really cool things. Some things that uh, are hard to accomplish in Blender otherwise without the use of uh, animated textures that can really fill up the, uh, the memory and uh, make render times quite a bit longer. So we're going to look right at what dynamic paint is. And uh, we're going to first start creating a plane. And the effect we're going to be creating today is uh, rain hitting uh, the surface of water, or like a puddle. And um, in a tutorial later, uh, maybe even this Friday, we're going to look at uh, how to concentrate dynamic paint to a specific area using textures. But right now, we're just going to look at creating the basic effect. So we have our plane here. We're going to scale it times 3. Uh, actually, we'll do times 2, I think, will be good. Yep. So now we're going to tab into edit mode. And we're going to press W. We're going to subdivide um, the number of cuts to be 10 first. And then we're going to press subdivide again. And we're going to make it, uh, let's go ahead and go with 4. Now, um, depending on the um, resolution that you want, like if you want your simulation to be a very high resolution thing, you may want to uh, increase the subdivision. But for what I want to show, I think this will be sufficient enough. So now we have our plane that's all been subdivided. And um, we're going to create another plane. We're also going to scale this up to 1.5 this time. We're going to move it up on the z-axis 3. And then we're going to go over to our particle systems. And let me just expand this out a little bit so you can see a little bit better. We're going to add a new particle system. We're going to just run through this simulation and make sure everything is by default. Um, this is a lot of rain, so this would be a pretty heavy rain. So I think we're going to change this around to 500. So we're going to half it. And uh, let's see if this will work a little better. And um, Still seems like a little bit too much, so let's try 250, and we'll just work our way down until we find something suitable. And I think this will be good, because that um, pretty much works out to about one particle per frame or so. Yeah, um, so let me see, change this to 250 here, the end simulation. So yeah, you'll see that's a good amount of particles to do dynamic rain. We might even actually take it down to 100, I think will be decent. Yeah, so this will be good. This is just a light little bit of rain. And um, the lifetime of the particles will be Seeing as they go down here, they actually only have to be about 30. Now, this doesn't impact our actual simulation too much, but it will help the CPU a little bit during the simulation. So now that we have this, we're going to press Alt-A, and we're just going to make sure that the, uh, fl uh, the uh, particle system you know, is just playing out its animation here. So we played out most of the animation, and uh, we don't have to worry about any of this other stuff here. We're going to go ahead and go to Cache, and we're going to click Bake. And it should be done uh, relatively quickly. Particle systems are fairly easy to bake. So now if we run back and forth here, we can see without the particle system being uh, messed up. So we have the cache here, which you don't have to cache it, but I like to because it makes the uh, dynamic paint more accurate. So now we're going to go up here. And in the Physics tab, we're going to select Dynamic Paint on our subdivided mesh. And we're going to hit Canvas. And then once we have Canvas selected, we're going to hit Add Canvas. Now, you'll notice here, here's our dynamic paint um, a large amount of our dynamic paint stuff. But before I actually get into um, any more of this, these settings, I'm going to go over to our particle system. And I'm also going to hit dynamic paint. And then um, here, I'm going to go over to brush, and I'm going to add a brush. Now, you'll see here, I'm going to talk about brushes first, because brushes have a, quite a few less um, uh, settings. And for most part, we won't even really get into any of these settings over here today. But the main one we're going to change is we're going to change from mesh volume to particle system. And then we're going to select the particle system that's on this, which is just called particle sy system. So and then uh, we're gonna just don't have to worry about any of these other things as well. So basically, dynamic paint is basically uh, you have a canvas, like something you would paint on, and then you have your brushes, your, your paint brushes, and you your paint brushes affect your canvas. It's pretty straightforward um, and simple. And uh, canvases can be affected in uh, two main different ways, which is vertex, and um, the the brush will affect the actual individual vertices, which is why we subdivided this so much. Or it can also be in the form of an image sequence, so it'll become a texture. And with texture, you have resolution sizes and a bunch of other stuff. But we're going to do vertex today because for what we want to do, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward and a lot easier to do than actually texturing it all. So now when we come over after we have vertex, and you want to click any aliasing just to make it a little bit more smooth. We're also going to go quickly over to our shading tab, and we're going to, on a subdivided mesh, hit smooth. That way our subdivided mesh will look nicer when it comes out because it's not subdivided enough to where we would not have to hit smooth. Now we're going to go over to the surface type. We're going to change paint to waves. And then over here, you can actually just leave everything like this. 
Now, open borders. Since our puddle is obviously not square, we're going to just select open borders. But in the, in the next few videos, that when we talk about dynamic paint, we'll probably change open borders to null or zero, not true, whatever you would like to say. And that uh, makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, let's make sure we have anti-aliasing selected. So now we have everything. And so now um, dynamic paint is quite a bit like um, smoke simulations until you cannot uh, bake a cache until the file is saved. However, we can go ahead and run the simulation. So if we press Alt A and we let it run, you can see yet that quickly our mesh is getting di displaced like like you know water droplets are hitting it. And this is much easier than doing a high res fluid simulation. It takes much less time. In fact, you can see I'm running the simulation in real time, which is also pretty cool. But you can see it's not quite the rain ripple effect we're looking for. So we're actually going to go back up to our brush and the paint source. Now we're going to change the uh, solid radius to 0.1. And uh, if we go back over here, you can see that the, you know, the particles in a, in a sense are affecting the mesh in a much smaller way, actually allowing for good ripples here. And um, we're not going to worry about these smooth radiuses or anything, but these are also another things that are really cool to get into. And uh, we're going to change the time scale is going to stay the same, the speed's going to stay the same. Now the damping, the damping is how much the wave is going to go. Um, it's basically going to be displaced throughout the text. So I believe if we turn this up, let's go to, you know. For instance, 0.5, and now you'll see that the um, the vertices are not displaced for very long. In fact, they're not even actually making really any waves. So turning the damping up will decrease the amount of wave you'll get, and more of a solid kind of thing, which also can be a cool effect to do. You know, if things are just hitting it um, and then springing off of the mesh. But we're going to change the damping down to 0.1, and you'll see that's a pretty good effect for what we want. Um, the spring is also how much the waves jump up and down. So if as we turn the spring up, so 0.5, you'll notice that uh, it's hard to notice here because the damping is pretty high, um, but the spring is definitely going up and down more. So we're going to change this to 0 0.02, and that should be good. Yep, you'll see here. I think the damping is actually a little bit too much, so we're going to turn that to 0.05. And now we'll see here, change the spring to 0 0.01. And now we have a, a pretty good little puddle simulation kind of uh, uh, waves hitting the, uh, or water droplets hitting our puddle. So now that we have that, that's pretty much it and all the effect you need. Now this, uh, this simulation here is not always the most practical as, uh, especially if you have very large meshes that you want, um, you know, rain to be displaced upon and you have to subdivide it quite a bit. Um, it's a little bit harder and so and for that you might want to bake image sequences But you have the same problem whereas if it's a big mesh You're probably gonna want high resolution images So you're gonna end up with the same memory problem and we're gonna talk about um, hopefully in our next video how to uh, Avoid this or at least decrease the amount of strain it's gonna have on rendering, but that's all we're gonna talk about today um, Hope you all enjoyed and learned something. Thanks for watching